I remember long ago when the sun was shining and the stars were bright all through the night. In the wake up this madness as I held you tight so long ago. Yes, that's right. I'm quoting Land of Confusion, and my, mostly I come back to the disturbed rendition of Land of Confusion, even though it's a Phil Collins Genesis song. But why do I talk about Disturbed today? It's not for the band, but for the artist behind the video. We're going to talk about the homegrown Todd McFarlane, born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, and he once held part of the Edmonton Oilers franchise under his belt. He even made the third jersey, but none of this is why I'm bringing him up today. It's because of other things that are going on in the comic book world and why we need to dive into the Top McFarlane situation. I am Cinder Shadow, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Do all the YouTube good things. Share this video out there because this might be a little bit of a ride for all of you. Well, most of you probably know Todd McFarlane by Spawn. Spawn was a comic book character, very renditious of Batman in that sense, but he was a returned soul from the afterlife. He was tortured, he died in a fire, and came back as Spawn. Uh, he One of his things was chains that he could drag people back to the to hell. It was kind of Batman meets Ghost Rider, but with a, a very vengeful soul. And that kind of was where Ghost Rider went, but with Todd McFarlane, it was a completely different story. The, the Spawn came back with, uh, with a deal with the devil, pretty much, and he had to fulfill that purpose and always dragging those souls to the afterlife. But he went against the grain. He fought back and was able to save his own soul. Now, that was the whole thing that put Todd McFarlane on the map. But where is he today? Today he is an accomplished toy maker in which I do own one one toy that I've had. This thing is very old at this point. I, I can't even remember. You can still see the glue from the price tag that used to be there. I bought this thing brand new. I have kept it sealed since I bought it when I first saw it. This thing is super rare now. You I I honestly can't find this especially you find the same one but you don't get it with the the same backdrop today you don't get with the shattered glass and the shattered glass if you look inside is actually on the floor there this is another very good thing of pop culture if you if you guys know uh the crow one of these absolute movies that you should watch uh the original not not the one sequels afterwards and apparently they're coming down to a remake soon once I know more information on that, I'll probably cover that as a topic, but we'll have to wait to see for that one. But Todd McFarlane, he also owned stake in the Edmonton Oilers at one point before Daryl Cates picked it up and uh, bought bought the entire franchise. Uh, he actually designed the gear logo for the Edmonton Oilers, which is recently being told that is coming back under the fold. So Todd McFarlane, I think, is in the backdrop of the Edmonton Oilers as well. At one point, he did own a home here in Edmonton as well. So, you know, this this hits home very close for me for someone that I, I've, I've kind of watched my entire life growing up and seeing. But why is he making the news? Why is he revolving around comic books and pop culture today well we've got a i've got a couple stories from bounding into comics of course and we're going to kind of dive into them because they give me the straightforward answer instead of having to read into it and have people tell you what they mean by this instead of actually asking them straight up so i'll get into the two there's two topics on this actually uh one is that they're talking about firearms being removed from dc figurines Okay, sure. Remove the firearms because this is some agenda of the United States. This is where this is. Um, and he he's making a workaround 
for this uh, agenda. It, it, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know. Um, Spawn creator and co-founder of McFarlane Toys, Tom McFarlane, recently confirmed that many of his companies that the uh, that he partners with to create toys are requiring the toys not to become equipped with firearms. So, you know, firearms is a big thing when it comes to toys and, and comic books and stuff like that. You can see Spawn here as Gunslinger Spawn. He's got a six six shooter. Um, this was the... Um, the um, the podcast or the video where all of this has come from DC Multiverse, uh, Todd McFarlane interviews with Sharpness Prime, which is another YouTuber out there. I brought up the subject asking one of the things people have been talking about recently is the banning of plastic guns coming with action figures. Now, as a kid, I used to have cap guns. I used to run around, you know, with a cap gun. And the second I it was discovered I had a cap gun, it disappeared out of my toy collection. My, my parents would take it and destroy it. It was something that uh, it wasn't even my parents. It was my grandmother because I didn't grow up with my parents. I had a very different style of childhood to most people. Now, you know, I understand it today. I still don't really care i i don't have a fascination with uh firearms or anything like that i i mostly just look at them and go hey cool you've got one it, it, it or you don't got one it, it, it's not something i run out and go to a range I, I have absolutely no i have no f's about it whatsoever i don't care that, that that's where it comes down to now when it comes to toys and figurines I don't see this as a good thing. I, I, I want to see the renditions of uh, toys with their equipment and everything like that. I want to see Batman with his grappling hook. And grappling hooks technically are considered a firearm when when it comes down to letter to law, especially in Canada. Hell, even paintball uh, equipment is on that level. So that's where where the line gets crossed. You don't know where to go, where where it goes. Um, he shows off the Thomas Wayne figure before continuing his thought. Now, Thomas Wayne, it was, uh, Batman's father and in an alternate universe, instead of, uh, Bruce Wayne living, Thomas lives and he actually becomes a firearm toting Batman. Uh, I feel like one of the characters is important to me. It's a key part of the character. I wanted to get a little bit more insight from your perspective. And there's no firearms to be allowed anymore. So this is what's going on with that. So it's very interesting in that sense. They're, they're removing them. They're replacing them with blades. This is some sort of ridiculous agenda that we're seeing coming out of DC Comics. You know, recently we saw Punisher get get completely demolished because they had to go into this new version of it. And I, I don't know. I, I There's a lot of things going on there. And Todd McFarlane in itself, he's just saying, you know what, let's, let's get... Okay, yeah, and talking about Punisher, Punisher is all about the firearms and the guns. And, and that is part of his character. But now they're being told by Marvel and DC in particular, that they can't put these things into the toys. So what McFarlane is looking to do to bypass all of this is he's coming up with a a weapons pack outside of things, and it's, it's going to be down the line. He, the, it's a creative workaround, and they're going to try and do this down the line where they have to sell it separately, and that's because they're being pushed away from the situation with it now but this isn't the only story that we're dealing with here there's also a different story altogether and it's Todd McFarlane disagrees with pushing female oriented figures in boys action figure lines why are you forcing stuff that won't sell this is the original story that actually led me on on this adventure myself now what else is going on here is they go on to talk about how more of the male dominated uh, toys, namely Superman, Batman, Flash, and so on down the line, where those are being sold a lot more. Now, that doesn't mean Wonder wouldn't, wouldn't sell. It's just there's a lot of mediocre, like, say, Squirrel Girl that just doesn't sell. It, it, it will sit on the shelf 
for months at a time. Or or Rose Tico, unfortunately, uh, from Star Wars The Last Jedi. It, it just doesn't sell. It sits on the shelf. No one wants it. And this is the type of thing that they're talking about altogether. It, it, now they're being pushed to make these, these female-oriented figures... So they put in all this work, but then their sales don't match the, the dollar amount that's there. How do you make this more appealing? How, how would you turn around and make toys more appealing for kids product lines? And, you know, recently, I believe it's in California where you're not allowed to put a, a line of just boys and girls toys. You're not allowed to segregate them. Um, you have to intermix them, although I don't know how you do that because it, a lot of times when you go down the toy aisle, it's done by color and not by, uh, the, the Pacific gender that we're giving our kids. It's, you, you go down an aisle and it's all pink. You go down another aisle, it's all blue. That doesn't mean that they're not uh, mixing it. It, it, it. That's that's where things get really difficult. And that is part of marketing and, and part of strategy on how they're selling toys and how you make these layouts of these stores so they they do a free flow. If you can't have that free flow and it's chaotic, you, you don't sell as much. You just don't. It actually plummets sales and does things very poorly. I... I I've worked in retail. It's as I actually ran a store. So when when you want to do things, you want to do it by the colors, and that variance of color is what sells more. But if you don't have that variance of color, then it makes it very difficult. And unfortunately, that also means it gets segregated by by boys and girls, and that that's how it comes down to it. You know, so it's simple marketing and that's where what they're talking about here uh on top of it being you know female oriented figures they just don't sell in a boys action figure lines where they're talking about batman and all this really comes down to trying to keep that cool factor right and they go on to talk about it and it's like i have to from time to time remind which i shouldn't have to to do but i do i have to remind people most executives from time to time in the 30 years he's been doing this when they ask certain questions he says why are you doing it todd i have to you wouldn't ask that question if you remember you used to be nine years old i think that quote in itself you know tells you a lot when i was young it was he-man transformers gi joe right and that's what we lived off of. And you know what? If you take it back to the basis and go, this sold back then, it's going to sell today. And this is where they keep trying to make the cool factor continue with the Todd McFarlane lines and the toys in themselves. Like this is, this looks absolutely amazing. I got to say, you got the Flash there that looks amazing. You got a different, uh, is that Flash Batman? I'm guessing that's Flash Batman. That's what the, that looks like. You got um, Superman versus, is this Doomsday? I'm trying to remember. But, you know, Tom McFarlane, like even Harley Quinn there looks pretty decent, ultimately. So there's a lot of stuff there. They're making things still looking cool. And Harley Quinn probably does sell but it probably doesn't do as well but i gotta say this harley quinn in the all gold get up probably does sell fairly decently you know i i know they're also doing five nights at freddy's toys and we'll have to wait to see where this goes what are your guys' thoughts should they be removing guns or firearms from the toys and should they just go straight out of left field and make all toys to uh from the boys line all to the girls line like where where does where does one draw the line here anyway guys this is proud canadian phoenix signing off don't forget to like and subscribe and share this one out there you know this this one kind of hits a little closer to home than most topics i do cover thanks for watching i will see you all next time this is the world we live in.